Hi guys, I'm Liz and welcome back to The Quick Journey. Today I'm going to be sharing a project with you that I've had on my list for years. It's a vintage art DIY gallery wall. Now you might be asking, why has it taken me so long to do a project that I have had pinned to my Pinterest and saved on Instagram for years and years and years? Well, let me tell you. One of the reasons it has taken me so long to get to this project is because even though a gallery wall seems simple, it can either look really good or look like a hot mess. And I was worried it was gonna look like a hot mess if I did it because I've tried them before in other homes and I just kept putting it off. Another reason is because finding the perfect vintage art for a DIY vintage gallery wall can take some time. So I have been searching for a long, long time for each of the pieces that I am putting up on my gallery wall today. Um, some of them have been found in antique stores. A couple of them I found at the thrift store. And the other ones I printed off of the internet. Um, there are a couple that I bought from a little shop, which I'll share below. She has beautiful vintage art, and it looks really authentic. I had it printed from Impix, so they're actual photographs. And I printed it on the fine linen paper just so they would look a bit more authentic. It was only like an, a dollar upcharge. So it was a really, really reasonable um, expense to get something that looks super authentic. Another place that I found really great vintage pieces of art was on the public domain. If you go onto the internet and search the public domain, you can find thousands of beautiful pieces of vintage art that you can download to your computer for free print it off, or you can print it off at an actual photo store like Impix, and have those prints to put up on your wall. It is extremely cost effective. There's lots of images that you can look at, and then you don't even have to leave your home. So if you're someone who struggles to find really good antique stores or to have time to go to the thrift store, I highly suggest looking at the public domain because there are lots of options there for you. One of the keys to having a great um, gallery wall is finding the perfect frames. You want to have variety. You can do different gallery walls. I wanted mine to look a bit more eclectic because I was using vintage art and I thought it would look better. So I chose different frames. I stuck with gold frames and with black frames, but some of them are a bit fancier than others. Um, I had some more expensive frames and then some cheaper frames. I did want this to be somewhat budget friendly. So a few of my gold frames are cheaper frames from Hobby Lobby, but they still look great. And if I want to change them later on, it's easily done and the wall is already up. I'm enjoying it. Um, and I can always change things out later, but it was really just getting things on the wall that was the biggest hurdle. It's really good to have different shaped frames, maybe some rectangular ones, even some oval ones. I didn't have an oval one um, to put up there this time, but I'm hoping to maybe find some smaller oval, oval framed um, vintage art to be able to add to the wall if I decide to later on. Another great thing to remember is scale. You want things that are larger and then some smaller pieces. I really prefer to stick with one or two bigger pieces of art, set them as kind of the focal point of the wall, and build my vintage wall off of that. You wanna make sure you mix up if you have different colored frames, that you don't have a whole bunch of gold ones here and wooden ones here and black ones up top. You wanna to make sure that you're being careful to mix things so that it's really appealing to the eye. So for my vintage DIY gallery wall, I did want some that were matted. I believe I only have one picture that's matted, which is fine, we're just gonna go with it. I might add some matted pictures later. I wouldn't suggest making the whole wall a gallery wall full of matted framed pictures. I think it's really best to stick with simple pictures and simple frames and only have a few key pieces that are matted. Sometimes the matting can get really busy and it can just detract from the actual pieces of artwork, so it's good to keep the matted pieces of artwork to a minimum. A little tip 
if you have bought new frames, they're always gonna put stickers on the glass. I don't know why they do this, but every single place you go, if you buy new frames, they're gonna have stickers on the glass. Or if you go to an antique store and the, the picture has glass on it, they usually put the sticker on the glass as well. So I usually just take a citrus essential oil, such as lemon essential oil, and I'll drop it onto the sticker, let it sit for a few minutes, and I start scrubbing, and it takes all the goo off. If it's really, really sticky, I might grab a razor blade or a sharp knife from my kitchen and just kind of scrape up the extra sticky um, if they put a bunch of masking tape on it, which sometimes they do that. It's really annoying because it sticks really good to glass. Um, so those are my tips in case you end up having sticky stuff on your glass because you want to make sure if you're doing a gallery wall that the art is what people notice and that it's not going to be um, big blobs of sticky goo on the glass. When you begin to hang your gallery wall, always start with your biggest or most important statement piece and grow your wall off of that. So I had an old painting, it's almost falling apart, um, of an old, uh, I think it's an eyeglass store, it's a mercantile, back in the 1800s when every, the store had everything in one place. Um, it's an old vintage painting and it's about falling apart, but it was my most key piece of artwork. And I put it up first and then built off of that as I went along. The next piece I put up, were the pieces that were next to that so that whenever I put my second large piece above it, I could kind of see where I was working from and I could measure things off of the smaller pieces of artwork as well. I have some videos, hopefully you can see them here because sometimes it's hard to explain the process, you just kind of have to see it and I hope that it's helpful. I am so happy with how this gallery wall turned out. I wish that the glass was like the non-reflective kind so that you could really see how beautiful it looks because I know on camera it catches the reflection of the windows which there's not much I can do about that but I am so glad I did it I am so glad I took the time to really plan the gallery wall and I didn't just throw it up there whenever I had three or four pieces of artwork I'm thankful that I searched for the perfect artwork so that it all blended together and made sense and I'm really glad that you guys were here along with me as I hung my first official gallery wall. Okay guys, that's it for me here at The Quick Journey here on YouTube. I hope that you had fun. I hope that I inspired you to maybe create your own gallery wall. It doesn't matter whether you have a lot of pieces or a few pieces. Having a three-piece gallery wall on a smaller wall can look really, really nice. So if you have a wall that's bare, and you don't know what to do with it, and you have some inspiration from a picture or something that you've seen, I highly suggest you go hunting for those pieces of artwork so you can build your own gallery wall. If you haven't already, definitely subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and leave a comment letting me know what you'd like to see here next week at The Quick Journey. Bye guys, have a good week.